You are listening to the Thinking Effect podcast with Osho Green and Lillian Kriegler. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 28 of the Thinking Effect podcast. And this episode is all about how can teachers enhance math understanding. But before we jump into this so important topic, I want to say hello to Lillian. Hello, Lillian. How are you? Good day, Otto. I'm really, really well, thank you. And you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm excited about this topic because, you know, math is all around us and it's so important for our life. We use it every day, you know, to uh, make decisions, to problem solve, to assess, evaluate, explain things. And it's, it's crucial also for uh, financial fu- future. Um, we need to have a good understanding of math to plan our, our future. And so this is one of the reasons that I'm kind of upset to, to notice that so many people have such a negative mindset towards math. So many people growing up with the thinking that they're not good at math and they can't understand it. This is so true. And a lot of the time, Ortel, I think it's because when math is taught, it is taught in a very abstract way. And what happens is students don't see the links between the maths in the classroom and how they can use it beyond the classroom. And if you lose touch with maths in that early period of time, then you do move beyond school and even into your adult life thinking that this is just too difficult for you. So really it is an educator's job to keep the students linked with that maths understanding. And so that's why I'm really keen that we talk about this, making math a kind of real life thing so that students can understand it's something that they can actually learn to love rather than be afraid of. Absolutely. And and you're so right. I mean, just some time back, um, my son came back from school, they started to learn percentages. And he said, I don't understand why I need to learn it. Whenever am I going to use it? And I told him, look, darling, we use percentage all the time. <laughs> it's so crucial. When we go shopping, and we want to compare the cost of different items, we use percentages. When the bank increases the rates for the mortgage or loan that we have, we have to use percentages and understand what it means for us and what's the impact on our life. So I explained to him how it relates to the real world. And it was upsetting to realize that his teacher didn't make that connection. And and that to your point, Lilian, that when students don't understand how it relates to the real world, they disengage. They're not interested in learning because they don't understand the benefit and the impact that learning this topic will have on their life and they don't understand how to apply it to their real world to their life that's so true you know and the thing is about maths is that it it builds layer by layer by layer by layer and you speaking about percentages and what i think in early years classrooms is that educators sometimes move on too fast. And at the very basis of percentages is this idea of proportion. How much of a whole are we talking about? So if I've got a whole pizza in front of me and I cut it in two equal parts, I've got a half. So the proportion of the whole is a half. And This is the basis of a whole lot of other number systems. And you're saying your son was battling a little bit with percentages. So if students understand that a pizza is a whole thing, then they can be brought to the understanding that 100% of that pizza is the whole pizza. So 100% is the full amount of whatever we are talking about. So then, you know, when you go off and you've got a 50% sale in the supermarket, you know that that is half the price. The proportion is half. It's 50%. Not, And it's it then gets generated through to, to decimals, you know, where again you're thinking about 
a, a fraction of the whole. And some students think that all the time we're learning a new maths thing that's completely different, whereas it's just different ways of talking about how much of something we are considering. So how, you know, what percentage, what, what amount, what decimal, and uh, all our statistics are built on this. And as you say, interest rates. And if we've lost this, of course it gets difficult. So really scaffolding students' understanding through the proportion, and very, very young children can do this already. They know how much is a half a glass and a full glass. Yeah, absolutely. And just to add to that, I know that there have been studies that done um, to explore how much children actually understand the math that they learn. And they found out that even the students that perform really well on the exam, so receive really high score on, on their math test, when they check these students' understanding about the core concept, they realize that they don't really understand the core concept. They just memorize and know how to do a, a certain exercise but they don't understand what it means and how it applies to the real world. And, and this is where the real problem is. And this is why it's so important to tie the math that you teach to the real life. So take it away from being an abstract concept and bring it into the real world and into the application, the everyday application of math. You're so correct. You know, and the, the thing is you can do it, particularly with the younger children in a very concrete way. You know, you put blocks out on the table or you put wishing stones out and you get people to sort out in different colors and then do this calculation or talk about how much or how little. Is it the same? Is it equal? Is it less? Is it more? Um, and that is even the basis of the number system. And then, you know, when they're out in the playground, uh, you can continue making it real. So, you know, you can talk about so we ran across um, the netball field or the basketball court four times. What is a half of that? Or, you know, have a look at the, um, the way the course is marked out. Can you explain how much is in that, that section and how much is in, so that they start to understand that maths really applies to the real world yeah absolutely and there are so many opportunities to do so i mean it's there are endless opportunities it's it's up to your creative thinking in terms of how you want to bring life to math and i'll add a few more examples uh, of exercises you can do with your students to help them understand how math relates to real life so you can ask your student to go to the supermarket with their parents and plan three different healthy meals with a budget of $20 for their family. And then they can come back and they show you the different items they share with the class, the different items that they chose within that budget. And you can have a discussion about it and, and may, maybe compare. Um, another thing you can um, do with your students is if you want to raise funds, let's say for a new sports equipment or for a fun excursion as a class, um, you can plan the whole things with your students you can ask them to think about and calculate how much budget do we need if all of us want to i don't know take the train get to that museum or go to that movie or whatever activity you want to do how much budget do we need and then what activities we can do or what products can we sell to raise funds and how much can we earn from selling each product and then how many products do we need to sell to get to that budget that we're after and that's a really fun way to exercise math. And also you'll get a great outcome, right? You'll be able to raise funds to something really great that the students are going to enjoy. And another thing we, we discussed the other day, Lilian, is about, it also involves supermarket and, and um, going and exploring olive oils, for example. So there are many different brands uh, in the store for olive oil. So, you can ask your student to look at three different brands, write down the, the cost for each bottle, but also the volume. Ask them to look into different volume for each brand. And, and then they can come up to the classroom with this list of you know, different brands, how much it costs for a bottle of one liter, for a bottle of 500 uh, milliliter or 750 milliliter. 
And then how do you compare them? How can you even know what is the difference in pricing? What do you need to do to calculate and, and be able to compare them properly? So know how much 100 milliliter of olive oil from each different brand costs. Uh, that is such a wonderful, I love that. I loved it when you first said it and I still love it. <laughs> and one of the reasons I love it is that it takes the students to um, having to consider different units of measurement. So price is um, dollars and cents and volume is milliliters. Um, and then also, you know, they have to look at uh, conservation of constancy. That sounds like a very fancy term, but you know, <laughs> if you've got a really beautiful, elegant, long a bottle of olive oil next to a little squat bottle of olive oil, can you still see that they might own uh, have the same amount of olive oil in them? So that conservation of constancy is something that they learn about so they become more aware of how their eye can be tricked into thinking that there's more. So the other thing they're looking for in that is the value. What is the value of it for me? Which is the best value financially? But which is the best value stylishly? What do you want to put on your table? <laughs> and so really, you know, because in a sense, you can also measure the proportion of things that are abstract like you know what is the quality of my friendship with one person is it like a 70 percent friendship or is it a hundred percent friendship <laughs> so, or you know is this um is it like 10 percent fashionable or is it a hundred percent fashionable and they really need to understand all of these ways of measuring and considering to help them make the best decisions Absolutely, absolutely. And there's so much you can include in that learning. It, it encapsulates so many beautiful things in, in one thing. And, and that's why, yeah, I think it's, it's beautiful because then you link different learning from different areas into one activity. And that makes it so much richer and authentic and, and uh, meaningful for your students. Yes, and it's complex, you know, I think a lot of the time we try to package things in a simple way for students, but then what happens is they don't see that they need information from different areas and they become used to, and as you spoke about, some of the students learn the formula, learn the method, carry it out, get 100%, but they still not might understand what the actual concepts were that were trying to be conveyed. And it's crucial, as you said, um, Otto, for financial literacy. You know, that's the one area in our schools that isn't being covered. And it can change the trajectory of children's lives. And I promise you, even parents and teachers can benefit from reading some great books. And I wanted to bring a couple of books to the attention of our listeners. So the one is um, the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, by I Robert. love this book. Yes. Oh, it's such an yes. awesome book. Such a great book by Robert Kiyosaki with fantastic information. And he's actually written one now for, for um, younger people. So follow that up. Then there's uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, Which yeah, is, that's um, a big one as well. <laughs> that's legendary. And actually, one of my favorites is Scott Pape's book. He's a, an Australian, The Barefoot Investor. Mm. And finally, you know, we are both um, women, and I know gender issues these days, <laughs> you know, are quite fraught. But there's a book by a journalist called Annabelle Williams, Why Women Are poorer than men and I promise you it is an eye-opening education I recommend it to everyone not just women because we have no idea in how many ways we are set back through you know a whole variety of things and it, it's not always just related to who gets paid more so um you know I think parents need to ensure that they pass on as much information as they can. And that shopping thing, going with the, the, the olive oil thing is a really fabulous exercise. 
yeah but read let, let them read as well for themselves yeah. I, I agree i mean you raised here a very important point that financial literacy is not covered within our education system unfortunately because that's such a crucial thing in our life we live in a material world and we all have to have a good handle on math and financial literacy in order to plan our future and live the life we want to have and i agree with you one of the things parents can do is educate themselves if they need to and these books that you mentioned are awesome i read them and they're just amazing apart from the last one which i need to read now <laughs> you do. Um, and one important thing to a tip for parents is to have conversation about it around the dinner table i mean we do that with our children about finance and what does interest rate mean what does it mean now that the bank raised the interest by um 0.5 and and so by having this conversation around the dinner table you actually educate your children and help them learn about finance and and math and how important it is to acquire that knowledge for their future so true and you know with the 21st century and all of these critical skills and the way the workforce is changing a lot more people need to be entrepreneurial and we mentioned in our discussion this fantastic program that's being done in schools called 20 dollar boss and i read the story about a young surfer who um, was in this program and he was really concerned about um, the soap in the water when surfers are out there the, the wrong chemicals getting into the water and impacting on corals and sea life and so he created his own surfing soap and it's so cool because he had to do all the branding and the design and the little um, containers and the soap is all fine and so you know this is it, it's it's financial it's entrepreneurial and it's also taking care of the planet. I mean, I can't think of a better trio of yeah. things um, in life. That's an amazing combination. And so you can help your children and encourage them to open their own little business if they're passionate about something. And that's another way to educate them about uh, finance and, and help them learn the financial world. So I think we're nearing the end of this episode. Yes. Would you like a little <laughs> summary quick? Yes, please. Okay so mask is all around us that's what it is and students need to be attuned to it but what happens is they tune out so if they need if they are going to measure calculate problem solve assess plan and make good decisions we need to make maths relevant for them and accessible so that's why it's important and how is some of the ways we've spoken about make it a real world issue give them real examples and give them opportunities to work with mathematics for a genuine reason. What a wonderful summary. Thank you, Lilian. And thank you so much for all the teachers that have been uh, writing to us. Um, please, co please continue to do so and tell us how you find uh, bringing math to life in your classroom. Write to us to the Thinking Effect podcast at gmail.com. We always love to hear your stories. Absolutely. We just love, love that. And if you write to us, if you would like it, we can send you a PDF uh, version of 10 tips for teaching your kids math when you're out and about. Wow. So That's amazing. That, if you want <laughs> that PDF, just write to us and we'll send it to you. Yes. Yeah, start your journey. Um, you're going to enjoy it. I'm sure you will. All right. See you next time. See you.